I wanted to talk about the data tag tool. You might notice I've actually got the data tag tool here as part of my basic tool set now. I use it so much. If it's not there, you'll have to look for it in your Dims and Notes tool set. And here it is here. Same tool, but I just use it so much. I've got it here next to my revision tool. I use these tools a lot, so I'll put them into my basic tool set. What I'd like to talk about is these objects here. There are some structural members here. Here's a design layer showing them. So there's a structural member. It's got a size. It's got a, a steel. It's profile. I've also given it a name. And I thought it'd be really handy to have a data tag that would pick up these pieces, pick up these names, and actually write them into my annotation part of my viewport. Because I've got a couple of drawings. I've got this one here, which is my lower level framing plan, which shows the beams. And then I've also got a floor framing plan showing all my floor joists. And it would be nice to show the beams there as well, or show the beam numbers. But I also want to use a technique that when I use the beams, they will, uh, the tag will actually pick up the name of the beam and the size of the beam. And if anything changes about that size or the name, it will automatically update on my drawings. So that's what I'm aiming for. Let's just have a like my resource manager. There's actually a data tag style here. Now I've already created one called JP Beam Tag, so I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to put in a new one here. I'm going to use uh, this one, or it doesn't matter which one I use. I'm going to use one that I've created earlier. If you want to, you can go to Vectorworks and grab one from the Vectorworks library. So I think the style's here. Data tag, is it here? Drawing label, data tag. Architectural, there might be something I can use here. A window, a name. It really doesn't matter because I'm going to have to redesign the whole thing. So let's duplicate the one I've already got data tag and I'm going to change the name of this I'm going to call it structural member structural member cool so there it is there I'm going to edit this so right click on it and we'll choose edit and now I get an opportunity to change the layout so let's edit my tag layout here's my tag layout I'm just going to hide the other layer so this is center justified at the moment. So I'm going to change this to right justified. And I'm going to move it just over here. This one is center justified as well. I'm going to change that to left justified. That way, if the beam grows or the beam name grows, it'll go out to the left. And if the size grows, it'll go out this way. What size have I got? Eight point. Let's make that bold. What size is this one? Seven point, not bold. Uh, maybe we'll make them both eight point, one bold and one not bold. The other thing I'm going to do is to select them both, right click, uh, let's, uh, where's a line? Right click, I can't see a line. So, oh, I've only got one selected. Let's make sure I've got them both selected, right click, align distribute, uh, let's align their tops, so at least they line up. Now this is going to be the insertion point here, so it's always going to work from the center of my object. And what I might want to do is just nudge those along so that they're actually centered. That's better. Cool. So this one is already set with its graphic style. But what we do need to do is to define the tag. So this is my tag here. Let's get rid of the one that's already there. And we're going to choose, what did I say? It was a structural member. And this wants to be the structural member beam name. So let's scroll down here. This is all the information so it's a member ID now, if you want to check we, we should really bring up the object before we start looking for those things it actually is all, all on the object info palette so that's that one this one we're going to define the tag again we're going to use a calculated field we'll get rid of whatever was there before again it's a structural member this time we want the profile I think it's called the profile size Let's just have a look. Profile. I think it's the profile shape. I can't remember if it's the profile shape or the profile size. I'll choose the profile shape to start with. And then what we'll do is we'll just uh, let's move this out of the way. Exit my tag layout. Now before we go any further, let's just get our object info palette. Select one of these and let's have a look to see what we've got. It's the profile size that we wanted. So let's go profile size. And this one here, member ID, that's also what I use. So member ID, profile size. So let's just check that again. Structural member, 
Let's edit that. Edit the tag layout. This one should be, let's scroll down. So structural member and we'll do profile. So I should be able to hit the letter P or even search for a profile size. We agreed profile size. Don't forget to add to definition. I always make that mistake. That's what the problem was last time. I didn't click on that. So it didn't get added. So now let's try using this layout. Let's get my tag tool. We're going to choose from this one, structural member, select, and you notice it picks up the structural member. It highlights there. So let's start here, click, and this one, click. So that's beam two. So I'm just going to rotate that left. And this one, I'm going to rotate so it goes up the right way. Now the, the reason it's not going up the right way is because my plan is actually rotated. If you have a look up here, it's rotated quite a long way. So let's go back to our viewport and have a look. So let's go back here. Now I don't have to put those here into my design layer if I don't want to. So let's, uh, this is my rotator plane here. Let's delete them from here. Because what I wanted to show you is how you can use them in a viewport. So if I right click and choose edit annotations, now I can put this annotation in my viewport. So there it is there and it goes up the right way, which is really cool. This one, we just need to rotate that 90 degrees. Just up here, I rotated it. And so now that's in my viewport. So we've got both the same. So this is my design layer. Let's say, for example, we call this garage beam. You notice my word garage beam updated in my annotation part of my viewport. Let's change this and we'll change its structural shape. So let's grab that one. It's a beam. Let's select the shape. Uh, engineer says we've got to use a heavier beam. So we choose this one. OK, and you'll notice that it grew here on the graphic style, but you'll also know that the garage beam updated and that changed there. So let's go back into this viewport. Let's select both of those, copy, and let's go to a different viewport. So I've got the lower floor framing plan. Let's go into that viewport. Let's paste in place. Now, if you do that, you might find that these don't find the object properly. So if it doesn't work, I'm going to delete those two. I don't know what I've done with these two, but for some reason they don't do what I want. So let's go here and we'll go midpoint, click, find the midpoint here, click. And you'll notice that it's named those both the same. So I'm going to change this to 90 degrees. There it is. So back to here, beam. Uh, actually, what I really want to call this is beam two. And I want the structural shape to be uh, 150 UB, 180 UB 22. There it is. Okay, so it's updated here. But you'll notice that these two have updated in my lower floor framing plan. When I look at the floor framing plan, they're both updated as well. So it's a really great way of doing that. Now you might find that these two here, that the 2 and the 180 are very close together. So we don't like them being that close together. So let's right click, we'll edit, edit the tag layout. This one wants to move across a little bit more. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of distance over there. And this one wants to move apart as well. So by making that change, you'll notice there's a bit more space now between the name of the beam and the size of the beam. So that's, I think, a great use for the structural member or for my tag to pull up the information for my structural member. Now, you could pull up all sorts of other information if you wanted to. I could also make one that picked up the framing so it could pick up the framing sizes of this information. If you want to really improve your Vectorworks knowledge, join my knowledge base, find the movies you need, but also attend regular monthly webinars where we can answer your questions. Thanks for watching.